the old 5 p.m. slump. Lila and I know it well. Okay, so I totally made that phrase up, but I bet you know what I'm talking about. Lila, come here. You come home after a long work day feeling just plain burned out and spent. It's around five or whenever you're done with your daily tasks when it hits you and all of a sudden you can't fathom moving another inch. You collapse in front of a screen and get lost in a rabbit hole of YouTube videos and Netflix binges until hours later you look up and it's dark outside. You feel a pang. Damn, how did the day go by so quickly? Or worse, you don't feel anything because you've gotten so used to this routine that you're numb to it. You go to bed later than you meant to and then you wake up tired, go to work and do it all over again. It's the wicked cycle that you've fallen into before, that we all have. Well, my friend, to that old life, I say, F that. Now, I know you don't enjoy when your days start blending together and disappearing before your eyes like pages flying off a cartoon calendar, am I right? So I'm gonna give you five steps to shake up your evenings and get out of that rut. They'll give you the boost of energy you need when that 5 p.m. slump hits and inspire you to fill every day with something fulfilling and inspiring. So are you ready to get out of this rut and have some fun? Okay, let's get started. Number one, take action. What's the antidote to living the same day over and over again? Actually doing things rather than just thinking about them. It's physically moving around, getting into your body and out of your head. You guys, I've struggled with this my whole life. I am just a person that likes to live up here. And so this is a crucial step for me. It's really getting out there and interacting with the world around you. Sometimes all it takes are baby steps to really get your momentum going. Force yourself to go for a five or maybe 10 minute walk and breathe really deeply the whole time. Try to notice things around you on that walk that you haven't noticed before if you're going you know, around your neighborhood or and see if this doesn't bring you a bit more energy. Maybe every day, if you start doing this, build a habit of it, then you're going to want to move your body more each and every day. So it's time to get moving, babe. Number two, plan ahead, but not too much. I've super recently started incorporating this Sunday routine that I've never had before. And basically, I just sit down for half an hour, go through my week, figure out the things that I need to do. Now the important part is to actually plan interesting things to do each day and make sure that you are making time for these things that maybe aren't quantifiable in how they're helping you, but are the foundations of having an interesting and fun and fulfilling life. Now, you don't have to choose big, great adventures to do every day after work. It can be the simplest things from, from cooking a recipe, your favorite dinner from your favorite Indian restaurant. It could be uh, making a collage, I don't know, theming it somehow and sending it in the mail to a friend that you haven't seen in a really long time. Like really let yourself just imagine the possibilities of what you can do. Nothing should make sense or need to make sense. It's just these little things that add up to varying your days. Now make your own running list of these tiny little things that you can do, that you want to do, that sound fun to you, so that each week, if you can't come up with something right on the spot, you can refer to this list and be like, ah, oh, yes, I do want to bike this trail on this day. Or, oh yeah, I do wanna make homemade ice cream on Thursday. Okay, number three, incorporate others. I'm pretty much exactly half introverted and half extroverted. And this means when I'm on the stage and performing, I love it, I soak up the audience's energy. However, after a show, I am useless and worthless and want to crawl into a hole and under my bed and snuggle with Lila for a week after that. But, but every so often when I'm in this burned out state, when I go ahead and make plans with people and follow through with them, go out, hang out with people, I usually find that that does invigorate me just as much as hanging out by myself and resetting ever could. It's really magic how being with good people, inspiring people can affect and heal you when you let it happen. Okay, number four, embrace the unfamiliar. What do I mean by this? Well, more and more I realize that I live in my own little bubble. 
the world isn't as small as we think it is. We just don't step outside of our comfort zones enough. Try to do something, go somewhere, or hang out with someone new at least once a week. You'll be surprised at how quickly this varies your days, gets you out of that rut that you've been in. So one day this week, try to smile and say hi to every single person that you make eye contact with as you're walking down the sidewalk. Wow. Try a new route to work. Eat someplace new for lunch. Find a podcast you would never normally listen to and listen to an episode that sounds interesting. The last step to cure you of your 5 p.m. slump. <laughs> Number five is focus on delighting your senses. You have the power to transform the most mundane things in your life into pleasurable experiences. We as Americans have a lot of trouble with this concept of really soaking in how we are experiencing things with our senses and really taking delight in it. We go, 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 and so we're either depriving ourselves of delight or we are overindulging ourselves until we feel sick. Now this takes slowing down. It takes, again, coming out of your mind and into your body because you are experiencing the world all of a sudden with your senses and that brings you into the present moment. Say you're eating a meal. Instead of just gulping it all up, you can take a minute to really first look at the food. Look at it. Is it beautiful? What color is it? Does it look tasty? Damn, appreciate that. Smell your food even before you taste it. What does it smell like? Does it make you nostalgic for anything? I had to do this the other day with a piece of birthday cake. Mom makes cake every year for each one of us. Every year, usually I scarf it down really quickly. <laughs> and this year I wanted to save it, so I froze it. Yesterday I ate the very last piece. And with every bite, just letting myself sink into these memories, of my 28 birthdays that my mother has made me this freaking cake. There was literally love in every bite and it made me so happy. If you're outside walking, notice if something has bloomed early. Here there are cherry blossom trees right now blooming and it is the middle of February. It makes me so joyful, it's the tiniest thing. But if you can cultivate this habit of relishing these tiny little things, noticing them, and then relishing them, then your life is going to turn around like that and become very interesting very quickly. So I challenge right now to take out a notebook or just go on your computer and plan out the next seven days of the week. Just write down one thing, one singular thing for each day that could take half an hour that you could do that would change up the day. I know that you can upgrade your evenings and that it will completely improve your life and definitely get you out of the 5 p.m. slump. I definitely wanna know what you do to shake up your evenings this week, so please tell me in the comments below and I can't wait to hear.